So when I was shuffling out um, this spread for you, what I do, uh, what I saw was this uh, balance scale. Okay, so it's like a, a balance. Uh, it's a scale, and uh, I see two hands kind of um, on either side trying to calibrate it exactly so that everything is in equilibrium. Everything is in balance. And um, so th that's what I saw. And uh, the other thing that I'm seeing as well is, uh, and I'll go to back to the first image in a little bit, but I want to get the descriptions out of the way so that I don't forget. The other thing that I'm seeing as well is um, I see this woman. She is wearing like, um, she looks like she's a, a Puritan. Like she, you know, um, it, it looks very Wild West. Um, almost like Oregon Trail looking uh, landscape. Okay, so there are mountains in the background. It's nighttime and she's wearing a bonnet and she has a, um, a bonfire going and she has some meat grilling on a spit. And she's like taking her time tending to it and um, kind of like rolling it so then it's uh, cooking evenly. So she's, you, you know that she's spending a lot of time trying to do that. And then this man walks by and he tears a chunk out of it and he just eats it and then he walks away without even, you know, um, a thank you, without even offering anything to her and without, and, and she, she, she doesn't seem upset. She just kind of looks down and then she continues to kind of turn it until it's ready. Okay. So those are the two images that I saw. And so I feel like there is a major, um, the, the thing that we're dealing with for the rest of January, there's a major theme about reciprocity, about reciprocity, about the give and take, about balancing out responsibilities, also about karmic justice in this spread. And um, I feel like some of you have been dealing with somebody who is a little bit opportunistic, OK, they're kind of like pulling the wool over your eyes or they are doing this with everybody. OK, it, it's almost like somebody who is quite manipulative, deceptive. Uh, they put on the air that they're, they they put on airs that they are a certain way. And um, what you know to be true is very different. I feel like there have been instances where this person it's it's almost like getting warnings, okay? And and um, I usually believe that you know, whenever the universe has a message for us, uh, messages comes in three. Messengers come in three, and if we ignore it, the signs get bigger and louder and more recognizable and more difficult to ignore. And so I feel like this has been like an ongoing issue with this person, where they're very deceptive. They're they're very um, opportunistic. And I feel like, you know, they'll take and take and take and take because they, deep down, they only care about themselves. And they have this, um, this, this mentality that like, well, the other person's giving, so why don't I just take, you know? And there, there's also something here that indicates to me that if, if we give to somebody, because we love them, because we care about them. Um, the way they look at it is, oh, well, the other person's giving, so why don't I just take, you know? So it, it's, it's, it's almost like if they didn't have it to give, then they shouldn't have given it, it out. So you're dealing with somebody who is, you know, lacking in awareness, lacking in, in consideration, okay? They could be younger, like they're, they could be a little bit more childlike, where they're a little bit more self-absorbed. They don't really understand the rule of things. They don't understand reciprocity just yet. Or you're dealing with someone who's like, who's opportunistic and they just, um, they, that's, that's just the, the energy that they're exuding. And so, you know, they will always, you know, ask for assistance. They will always ask for help. They will always kind of like um, not want to do the responsibilities on their own. And I also feel like it's someone who's a taker in the financial sense. Okay. So what we have here is the five of pentacles, hands outstretched, 
somebody that you're dealing with is wanting, you know, like uh, the assistance, wanting the financial, um, wanting the financial assistance, needing help or constantly asking because they might have poor time, money management skills. I'm seeing as well for some of you, um, you know, Virgos, you guys are, are really, really, really kind people. You're very, very kind people. But like with um, all acts of kindness, I feel like, you know, you, you want to devote your energy and your resources and your time to help people who are willing to help themselves. If someone has fallen on hard times, of course you want to help them out, right? And then you hope that, you know, not because you want anything in return, but you hope that, oh, they're dealing with a, a, um, a bump in the road. So if I help them, they're going to overcome it and then they'll be okay. And then there are people where they make really bad decisions over and over and over and over again, and they don't learn. And uh, you feel like if I help them, they're never going to be able to um, help themselves. They're never going to be able to, you know, learn responsibility. So I feel like some of you have been dealing with this and you're coming to the realization that the other person's taking me for a ride. And if I keep helping them, it doesn't teach them uh, responsibility. In fact, it's enabling this type of behavior. So I'm going to put a stop to it. So you, you have somebody here that's like, woe is me. Okay. Three of swords. It's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault. It's almost like, can't you see what's happening to me? And it's, it's, it's lacking in the ability to take on uh, responsibility, to accept our responsibilities, to accept that we somehow contributed to this situation and we're here now, but we don't accept responsibilities and we cast the blame on other people. So I feel like you're kind of stealing up or you are trying to show somebody, you know, some tough love. You're trying to let somebody um, kind of um, learn their karmic lesson. Okay, this is not about spite. This is not about vindictiveness. This is not about turning our back on a person that needs help. This is more about dealing with someone specifically where they are not really seeing or taking ownership of their actions and over and over and over and over again, they're not able to connect that, you know what, I created these problems, so I'm going to have to fix it. So I feel this energy here about you detaching yourself, about you telling the other person, you know, I, I can no longer help you. However, I have these resources or these people that you cannot get assistance from. Or, you know, if you want something, you have to work for it, okay? So for those of you who are dealing with this in children, uh, somebody wants, like, uh, somebody cuts corners, I, I feel. Somebody cuts corners. They don't, they want the easy way out. They don't want to, you know, learn delay gratification and uh, um, self-discipline and, you know, work hard so that you can be proud of your work. They just want to cut corners. And I feel like you're kind of telling them in very, um, you know, few words, like if you want to get money for that, you have to work for it. OK, so I, I feel like you're you're kind of drawing the line and uh, you're being very firm with another person. I also feel as well for some of you this. Honestly, I, I don't feel an, uh, a lot of children. I feel like it's somebody who's an adult. OK, it's somebody who is like over the age of 18. It's almost like from your perspective, you feel like they should know better. And um, you're sympathetic. I feel like you care about this person. You don't have any uh, vindic vindictiveness or any malice or any anger towards them. You just want to tell them, you know, the, the, the concept of um, karma and you want them to really understand the value of hard work and you want them to understand that you can cut your corners your whole life and at the end of your life you're going to have nothing to show for it and I feel like you you just want them to understand that there are ramifications to their actions and they're having a really hard time seeing it because I feel like they've um they've they, they've been manipulated and they've been um they've been doing this with a lot of people 
and they've gotten away with it because I feel like you're dealing with someone who's very slippery and very slick. Okay, like the the world is there for my taking. Like um, someone who's very self-absorbed. Very self-absorbed. In the relationship front, however, um, we have a different energies. I feel like some of you are in a relationship with somebody who is um, very careful with money. Okay, it's somebody who wants to get their money's worth. From an outsider's perspective, they might be consider calculating or um, um, too cautious with money. So, you know, in a way, it's like somebody who others perceive to be very, like, um, to be a little bit more on the stingy side. But I feel like they have a lot of love to give. What we have here is the lovers. And um, this is like shouldering the responsibilities of the relationship. It's somebody who's very practical. It's somebody who's very grounded. I mean, like, um, two, there are two people here, and he's he's holding her up with his legs, okay? So it's it's like he's shouldering the responsibilities. So I feel like whoever it is that you're dealing with, male or female, this is somebody that's like, honestly, at the end of your life, you want this person by your side. When you're 80 years old and you're sick and you're no longer, you know, uh, young and spriteful and youthful and attractive, this is still somebody that's going to love you for you. They're going to be there for you to um, make sure you take your medicine. Um, you know, um, like when we think of like a really old couple, right? And the, the physical attraction might or might not be still be there. And we, we think about, you know, declining health and, and uh, whether or not we're going to be in our best shape. This is somebody that will be there for you through thick and thin because that's just the way they are. So I feel like you, you have a partner, you have somebody that will be there for you through thick and thin. And some of you are cognizant of this fact as well. Um, they're, they're, they might not be like the most romantic type of a person, but they're very... Um, they're very stable, very loving, very nurturing, and, you know, they, they don't mind taking care of you. They'll, they'll be there when you're sick. They'll be there through the, the bad times, okay? It's somebody who's not going away, who doesn't shy away or, you know, run for the hills at the first sign of trouble. It's somebody with sustaining power. So you've got somebody that's really, um... It, it seems to me almost like a karmic relationship here. I have here the Six of Pentacles and also the Five of Pentacles. These are big karma cards in my book. They could be good or bad, uh, both of them. Usually I think of karma as, you know, what you give out is what you get back. And both of these cards are falling out in this spread, Five and, and Six, which basically means you have some good karma coming back to roost. And then if you're dealing with this karma from the other person who's not really learning responsibility, then I, I definitely feel like that might be associated with their, their energy. But aside from that, I feel like there might be a karmic relationship. It's somebody who um, the two of you are learning a lot from one another. And I feel like, honestly, I feel like the other person, you know, um, Virgos, like I mentioned before, I feel like you're turning your back, right? And um, you're turning your back on opportunists. And I feel like many of you, when you're young, you guys, not that you're not sweet and, and adorable and, you know, very kind and loving. You still are all of these things. But I feel like in the process of uh, going through life and dealing with very, very self-serving people and dealing with people who are like emotionally irrational, uh, explosive or just um, so self-absorbed, I feel like it has dampened your faith in humanity. That's what I'm sensing. So I feel like that, that sense of um, uh, unconditional love, unconditional trust, that sense of childhood um, abandonment, I feel like it's, uh, it's, life has taken a toll on you where you're no longer naive and innocent and trusting and, and you know, uh, giving your heart away. You're very selective about where you're giving your energy at this point that I'm reading for many of you guys. And I feel like the other person that's in your life, yes, they're calculating. Yes, they're practical. Yes, and all of these things. But they have like a calmness about them 
where they have a really good understanding of human character. They have a really good sense of, you know, we're all humans, we make mistakes, this person might be an opportunist, but, you know, they, they probably grew up with a lot of people that were like that, and that's why they're like that. So this person is giving you a sense of wisdom. They're kind of broadening your, your worldview. They're able to show you kind of like another side of looking at a situation or looking at a person. And I feel like they're teaching you a lot about, you know, generosity, not so much financial generosity, although for some of you it could be, but they're teaching you about like the generosity of the spirit. Okay. Which is many of you are very hard on yourself. Okay. You're a perfectionistic. You beat yourself up when you do something wrong. And the thing is, when we're really hard on ourselves, we're also very hard on other people. Okay, right? So the other person that you're dealing with here, this is um, either a lover, a relationship partner, somebody you're interested in. I feel like they're very um, forgiving. They're very forgiving. They understand that we all have flaws. They understand that we don't always grow up in the best environment. And so hate the act, the action of the person, but don't hate the person. And uh, they're teaching you to not be so harsh. That's what I'm seeing. They're teaching you about that, you know, spiritual generosity. Don't be so hard on other people because it's a reflection of how hard you are on yourself. Don't be too critical of other people because you are very critical of yourself. And, you know, accept the flaws, accept that things are not always perfect, accept that we're human. And so I feel like there is a very uplifting um, situation happening here where somebody is showing you a different perspective, a different, a different side of a situation. And <clears throat> I feel almost like... I feel almost like this is something where it's taking you outside of your element in order for you to truly understand it, okay? What I have here is the Knight of Wands. This is like rushing in um, arguments, defending a situation, defending our beliefs, fighting on a moral ground. So for example, if you're holding back your generosity because the other person is just like taking advantage of it, they're not learning. And uh, you're just like, no, I'm going to hold my ground because this is the, about the principle. This is not about, you know, giving the money or being generous. This is about letting the other person kind of um, learn their lesson. And then I feel like there's something here about, you know, standing your, standing your ground, fighting something on a matter of principle. Principle, like uh, it's the principle of uh, work ethics. It's the principle of... Uh, not taking the easy way out. It's the principle of hard work and, you know, delay gratification. These are the things that you really want the other person to understand. And I just feel like there is a paradigm shift here where it requires you to kind of step out of your element and to really understand where the other person is coming from. I have here the Queen of Wands and the Knight of Wands. I usually think of this as a family unit. And I usually think of this woman, this uh, uh, Queen of Wands, as somebody who is very caring. And she's also very protective. And she's also very, um, it's almost like that um, mother's love type of energy. Okay, mother's love, like mother's uh, forgiveness, a mother's unconditional love. Uh, seeing the other person as a person, we can hate the trait in the other person. But we sh really shouldn't discredit the person. We really shouldn't discredit their humanity. So I feel like you're dealing with someone who's really, really changing your worldview. And we have the world as well. And they're teaching you a lot more about... They're teaching you a lot more about forgiveness. They're teaching... They're, they're showing you to be more understanding. They're, they're showing you to be more forgiving. And I feel like they're showing you to be all of these lessons that you're learning from the other person. They're showing you how to be um, kind of like less harsh 
when it comes to your judgment because ultimately I feel like many of you are very hard on yourself as well so um, I see like a little bit of a sleight of hand and I see a situation where things are not what they seem you're getting some major epiphanies it, it's almost like this person is like this but in un, in um, or under harsh conditions they're like this so I feel like you're seeing really really good sides to people okay and I feel like there might be it, it, it's almost like whoa I thought things were one way but then now things are turning to be a different way but I feel like it's a turn in a better direction all right um, let me see if there's anything else so what I have here is this king of swords and um, I want to see if this is the opportunist that you're dealing with or somebody else okay give me just a moment King of Swords. So I have an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. I feel like for some of you, um, there might have been a separation here. Three of Swords, King of Swords, with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And I feel like they're thinking about you. They're wondering about you. And they're just like, do, um, do you miss me? Does the Virgo person miss me? Are they okay? What are they up to? Do they not see me trying to reach out? Have they, especially if they have been sending you messages, they feel very, very left out by you. Um, for some of you, I feel like you have moved away from this person like once and for all. And, uh, you know, you, you are really trying to block communication. You're trying to block solicitation from this person. Reaching out, getting blocked. Okay, so I feel like you're you're trying to um, block communication and solicitation from this person. Um, so Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, and I almost see this sense of like um, I've I've learned I've learned I've learned who you are I, I know who you are, and um, I've moved on. Okay, so there's a very strong sense of finality associated with this. Um, that is all I have for you here. Um, Virgos, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blanking out. Um, what I do feel, one last thing, is um, I feel like there's a situation where, you know, uh, if someone has already revealed their, their true character, um, I feel like it's, it's already, you know, it's like cracking that egg, right? Cracking that egg. It's already cracked. You can't put the yolk and the, the, the white stuff. Um, back into the the crack shells okay cracked eggs so it's sort of like things have already been hatched it's it, everything is already hatched everything has already been determined so I feel like it's you can't really go back to a situation from the past okay um I wish you all the best okay and uh, take care of yourself